Vue.js and Ember.js versus React and Angular. Your guys' response and my reactions. Stay till the end of the video and we'll find out what happened. So in my last video, I did a video on why do we have to use Angular and React? And I got a lot of great feedback from everybody. Some positive, some negative, some people in the middle. So I wanted to go ahead and read off some of my favorite comments and kind of respond to them in this video. I think this uh, had a lot of controversy involved in it. It wasn't certainly my intention to be controversial. And let me be say before I start, I really like Angular. I really like React. I just don't think it's the number one JavaScript framework we all have to go to when we're starting to learn uh, frameworks. And I'll explain a little bit more about that here today, but I wanna go and look at your guys' reaction on this. So my first comment I wanna read off is by Andrew Howard, and he said this, you could see right there. I've, re I've, recreated, I've recreated an application using Vue. The project was originally built with Angular 2, and I'm still preferring Angular 2. I still don't like React and Vue's combining the HTML and logic code into one file. I prefer everything being separated like how Angular does it. Plus Angular service files I find are so much easier to code and understand than messing around with st state, reducers, immutables, etc. So I mean that's a good point if you're really into Angular 2. I kind of like Ember.js how it breaks stuff up into different files. Um, and the Angular side I know they're big into breaking things into different files as well. So it makes it a little bit easier to follow. Uh, you can, in the Vue.js world, you can break up things a little bit, but it's definitely not the same. Um, usually if you're using Vue CLI, you have what are called single file components. Each component has its own file, and inside each file you have your own CSS, and then of course the Vue instance, and everything with the Vue instance for the component. It's all in one file. I'm still, uh, I, I still think that's a great way to go, but I do also like Ember.js's way where you have your own uh, HBS files, handlebars files that have like your HTML in it, but then you also have your separate JavaScript in different files and it all combines it together. So there's just different approaches, but I can understand why you like that. The next comment is by Waldo. And I'd, I'd say look at the area you want to be in and see what's popular out there as far as openings go. Learn those things. No matter what though, don't get into the mindset of learning say React. See a video, pro saying, oh my God, you must learn Angular and then immediately stop learning React and picking up Angular instead. This sort of paralysis due to over analysis kills a lot of developers and I feel makes a lot of people not the experts at XYZ technology they need to be. I'm definitely on the side of becoming a master instead of jack of all trades. So much is so transferable, so stick with stick and two and learn one framework, one language, etc. Master it before moving on. I mean, that's a great, great advice there. So I think we always get that shiny object syndrome when we're learning to program. We see one framework and like, ooh, there's another framework. We got to learn that now. And then if you never really understood the fundamentals of one then that's really bad. I think you could say that with, with a lot of different things. So if you do start off with Vue.js, yeah, stick with it. Learn the learn more than just the basics. Get into more advanced programming. Try to put together a, a moderately complex application that serves some purpose for you. And try to dig in a little bit deeper. Just don't go to the service level and don't just try to jump to the next new framework when it comes out. Maybe take a look at the other frameworks just to get an understanding of what they're doing. but. Certainly you gotta pick a horse and, and you gotta stick with it. So I agree with that. The next comment is by my buddy Coding Tutorials 360. If you don't know, Dylan and I have a Facebook group together. You can see the link below where we help people with coding problems or you can just BS, let's go code tech and caffeine. So he says, I got to say I disagree when talking about someone who is an entry level developer or trying to break into the market. If you look at the job trends for those technologies through Indeed, you will see that Angular and React beat out Vue and Ember by a ton. It doesn't mean that you won't get jobs from working that route, but to advise a starting individual that key that is okay is bad advice. I do respect Dylan's advice a lot because he is in the thick of it. He is a new developer. He just started his He's been doing development for a couple years now, but he's definitely in that route a lot more than I am at this point in my career. I I have I started Ember.js when Ember.js was more popular than it is now, 
but it was still at the point where Angular was like, everybody has to learn Angular or Backbone. And Ember was still not as quite as popular as those two. And I took, a, I took an alternative route. So, and it worked out for me. I definitely see a lot of opportunities my way because I took a little bit different route. I didn't learn the quote unquote frameworks you're supposed to learn. Um, by the way, there's somebody out there that is screaming jQuery, jQuery, jQuery right now. I can hear you, jQuery is a great framework. I'm not trying to discount it at all and I think that's something you should learn, but for the sake of this argument, I'm sticking with these client side front end frameworks like React or Angular where the routing and everything's done in the single, the first page load. So yeah, I, I definitely uh, agree with Dylan in some points there. If you do look at that graph he linked, it does show that there's a little tiny lines at the bottom for Vue and Ember and of course React is huge and then Angular is just a little bit above everything else. So I mean that's definitely one way to go through it and like I said I like Angular, I like React, I, I like the developers. I like the React, uh, to say one good thing about React, they have so many conferences. Like every other month there's a conference. React Rally was just happening recently. If you're in the React ecosystem it is pretty rich and there's a lot of different conferences, a lot of stuff happening. I still think you can make a living off of learning something other than that as your first language. Especially if you go out of your way to try to find a job using Vue or Ember.js. They are sought, there are as many sought after positions for those if you're qualified. And if that was one of your first languages and you were able to create something interesting and get your foot in the door somewhere, there there is great opportunity out there and there's not as much competition, which I think is good. Uh, on the other hand, with Angular and React, there's more jobs, of course, but it, there's a lot more competition out there for those jobs, and you are going to be competing against a lot of other people. But, I mean, it's really personal preference. I mean, if you want to learn React and try to get your foot in the door somewhere, then that could work too. Uh, I think someone else in that same, that same thread mentioned that there's this kind of stuff that's come up recently, and I kind of touched on it a little bit in my last video about React and how there's this patent dispute with BSD and that the Apache BS, Apache wasn't going to include some stuff with React in it because of their particular BSD patents. I, I'm not going to get into that in this this video. I'm still trying to. I was going to make a video on it, but I need to research it more and find all the implications. But the bottom line is is that when you create a React app, there's certain there's certain things you have to realize um, that are patented and that React owns a certain, they own certain things about your, your code. I, I'm not going to get into that, like I said, but it, it's another reason that you may want to look at a different framework. So that's, that's, uh, that's what I think about that. And the last comment, I mean, I had quite a few comments on this video. One is you're using indeed though. What about going a technic a, to technical specific recruiters? I hired underdog just to name a few. So in my last video, I spent, I saw some graphs. I just picked San Francisco um, out of the top of my head to see like here, can you even get a job in Vue.js? Can you get a job knowing Ember.js? And I saw quite a few jobs for both of those, not as much as React and Angular, but it wasn't to the point where like you know, it was one Angular job or one Ember job for every, you know, 100 React jobs. I mean, there's still plenty of opportunity out there for you. So I had, I didn't go through and look at a bunch of other graphs, but I think you're going to see the consensus is, and I've always admitted this, there's more jobs out there for React and Angular, but I just don't think that you have to choose those frameworks to start off with. So I think this is a, a good discussion to start off with. I mean, a lot of people have different opinions on, on react, react and Angular. Like I said, I really like the community with React too. Just all the stuff that's happening and, and all the the uh, conferences. I mean, it's amazing. It's just, I think that we don't have to limit ourselves to one. And if you're able to learn one of these frameworks really well, you're gonna be able to get a job somewhere. I guarantee it. And with some caveats, you're still gonna have to, no matter what you learn, if Angular, React, Ember, Jazz, Review, you're still gonna have to find a way to to stand out from the crowd when you're applying for places, especially if you're a new developer or programmer. And that may be having a four-year degree, that might be having some amazing projects, more than just everybody else's to-do apps and blogs that everybody else creates. You're gonna have to be like a maintainer of an open source app that is actually popular, that more than just you contribute to. 
Uh, you're, you're gonna have to stand out some way. So that's a, another topic for another video, but I just wanted to point that out. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button and also click that little bell button. And you'll get notified next time I have a video out. And just one more thing before we end, and Udemy is having a $10 sale. If you click on the description below, you can see some of the great links. This is the end of the school year, beginning of the school year sale. So it's well worth checking out. Thanks, take care.